Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's Episcopal Church in the heart of Bennington. I invite you to stand as you are able for our opening hymn, number 207, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Ah, uh -huh. 
seated for the readings. Good morning. Happy Good morning. Easter. This is the first reading from Acts 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message, that message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him we are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem they put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he was the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him received forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read Psalm 118 responsively by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. My salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from the epistle to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to stand as you are able for our sequence hymn, The Day of Resurrection. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us for the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, 
had already been rolled back. And they entered the tomb. They saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Come, eternal divinity, and aid our ears to hear you, our eyes to see you, and our behavior to share you. For you alone are enough for us. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> for those of you who may not know me, uh, I am Father Jeremy, and I'm the priest for this parish. And on behalf of everyone here at St. Peter's and the entire Episcopal Church, uh, we'd like to say welcome, and we're glad that you're spending part, part of your Easter here with us. Now, I say part because celebrating the resurrection of Christ here at the altar and in the church is only one aspect of the Easter experience. Sure, there are other parts, like the chocolate, the big dinner, the giant cake awaiting for you in the parish hall, the Easter egg hunts. But that's not what I mean. The other part of the Easter experience actually happens every day after today. It happens in how you live out your daily lives. Now, in case you missed it, uh, I'd like to catch you up on where we left off with our hero, Messiah Jesus, uh, from Good Friday and Holy Saturday. When we last left off, our hero had just been crucified. He, like thousands and thousands of others who didn't see things the Roman way, were brutally strung up and nailed to giant wooden posts and put outside Roman cities as human signs to anyone that walked past, to let them know that defiance to Rome meant a gruesome death. There's even this fun little back and forth between the chief priest and, and the governor Pilate, where the chief priest says, can you at least redo the sign that you like nailed to the guy that says, instead of saying king of the Jews, it says, he said he was king of the Jews? And Pilate was like, nope. If you were to ask me one word to describe Easter, it actually wouldn't be resurrection. It wouldn't be crucifixion. The word I would choose is power. The message Pilate wanted to send out into the world was that even a prophetic Jewish king wasn't strong enough to oppose Roman rule. If he allowed the, he said he was, people could have said, oh, well, he wasn't actually. 
And so the question I dare to ask each and every one of you is who has power in your own life? Because that's the true theme of Easter. That's the theme of every aspect that makes up this Easter story. In Jerusalem, in the story of Christ's struggles, crucifixion, and resurrection, Pilate tries to show that he has the most power, that he controls life and death. We think, we think it's the Jews in this story, but it isn't, because they knew, they actually knew that if they voted to free Jesus, it would be like giving a finger to Caesar. That's why they ask for Barabbas to be freed, even though Barabbas is a convicted felon. Not because they hated Jesus that much, but because they feared what we meant, what he meant to the Romans. So, okay, so Pilate thinks that he has all this power, right? But he doesn't. God does. Because three days later, Jesus just gets up and walks out of the tomb. Every single time that humanity tries to up the ante on God and think that we have more power than the almighty divine, we find out that God has the most power. Haven't you ever heard the axiom that if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plan? That's based on the exact same theme. Every time we think we have more power than God, we are reminded that it is God who has more power than us. And I actually wouldn't want it any other way. I don't care what anyone else says. I am glad to have a faith that actually humbles me week after week here within these walls. A faith that invites me into the most psychologically uplifting sentiment that I could ask for. That the divine is enough for me. That I don't have to be in control of everything all the time. That my whole life isn't determined by me, but just maybe something mightier and smarter and greater than me. It's a little bit against the American dream ideal that we have control over every aspect of our lives. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't strive for things. But I am saying that if you feel like you have to be in control of everything, it is going to hold you back. It is going to weigh you down and it is going to exhaust you. If Easter is about power, who has the power in your life? I remember years ago I was working on my master's thesis in the UK and decided to take a holiday and go to this Christian festival uh, in the English countryside with my friends. Now, to be fair, it's also like three weeks before the thesis is due, so it probably wasn't the best idea. Um, but classes were well over, and I was like, yeah, I deserve it. I'll go ahead and do it. One weekend, couldn't hurt. I'll get it finished. And I end up talking to my mom on the phone. Um, if for those of you who have met my mom, this story will make a lot of sense. Um, but I remember talking to my mom, and she was asking where I was, and I commented that I'm at this festival. And she flips. She's like... Well, in my mind's eye, she flips. I couldn't see her because there was like 4,000 miles in between us. But beyond the original, like, what? That she like yelped out. Um, she didn't like yell or anything, but she was like, go back to your like room in London, go back to the library and finish your thesis. And I was like, no, 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 it's just the weekend. And she was like, no, go back. Now, mind you, I was in my mid-twenties. I hadn't lived at home since I was 17, okay? She wasn't in the UK. She was back here in America. But that mom voice traveled through that phone, snatched me from where I was, I'm, and immediately I hung up, marched into like the, the office where the volunteers were, and I was like, 
sorry, I can't volunteer. I was even volunteering. I was like, I can't volunteer anymore. You'll have to find someone else. I got to go. Went to the train station and went back. Power is exerted over all of us all the time. Sometimes willingly, sometimes not. Easter, in its awkward way, maybe even just going to church, actually, um, but at least Easter for sure, reminds me that there is always someone more powerful than me. And so how I let that affect me is what's really important. That's the part of the Harry Potter story where Harry realizes this very same thing. Harry talks about the difference between walking into the arena versus being dragged into the arena, kicking and screaming. Either way, you're going in. Either way, he was going to have to face Lord Voldemort. But he got to choose. He got to choose who he wanted to be as he entered it. I mean, if nothing else, let the Easter miracle be a reminder to all of us that even if we think that there is a ceiling on power, like Pilate thought there was a ceiling on power, that Pilate thought was, was death, for example, God showed us that there is never a seal, and that God is always on top of it. I said today was the first part of Easter, and that the second part is every single day after, because Easter is all about the arena. It's all about you being in control of your life. On a historical level, it's about Jesus and God being in control of the situation that Pilate tries to manipulate. But on a personal level, it's an example of how we all get to live our lives. Believers study the why of resurrection their whole lives, and they all come with different reasons called atonement theology. There's books and books about it. And in church, we talk about them. We pray about them, and you'll hear about them. But today, this year, this Easter, I felt God asking us to focus on this specific area. Regardless about what you feel about the church, about institutional religion, or any of it, being the Jesus of your own life mean, means knowing who has power over you and who believes in you, even if you don't believe in yourself. Be honest with yourself. How is your life going? Is there space for it to be transformed, for it to evolve, for it to grow? My hope this Easter is that whatever your life may be like, that you can become the Jesus of your own story. That you take back who has the power in your life and you let God worry about the resurrection part. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able that we might profess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Pray for the whole state and for the world. <clears throat> Lord, in baptism we have become citizens of your holy body and promised our lives to the spreading of your kingdom. May we never forget that promise in our everyday lives. Almighty God, we pray in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Church of the West Indies, in the Vermont cycle of prayer for St. James and Essex Justin, Junction, and for your holy Catholic Church. That we may see past our divisions and spread your love to all people. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you that all members of your church may be guided by your discernment and will. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all lay ministers and church ministries, that they may be faithful champions of your heavenly desires. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, in the states where we live, in the towns and all around us. That leaders choose the right stewardship of this earth and care for the people of its towns. We pray for all countries and places afflicted by war and violence. For Gaza and Israel, for the Ukraine and Russia, for Haiti, for Sudan, and for all places that violence has taken its evil root. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Favor in your sight, and that all who have the ability to choose peace over division, that there may be reconciliation among nations and among peoples of all politics, races, ethnicities, faiths, and identities. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. You are invited to say aloud any names for whom you wish to pray. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine, shine upon, upon them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot, ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law 
and the prophets. In whatever posture is most penitent to you, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Jesus straightened up and said to the woman who sinned, Woman, where are they? Is there no one to condemn you? She said, No one, sir. Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, don't sin anymore. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, you are beloved. 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 Yeah, you do it. O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. The offertory hymn for this morning is Come Ye Faith.
give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law. To open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in this their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Celebrate his death. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. But the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor glory and worship from generation to generation. Mm -hmm.
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the world. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. It is the tradition of this parish that communion is offered in both kinds, bread and wine. If you would like to drink directly from the chalice, it'll be the chalice that Vicky holds. Um, put one hand out, I'll give you the bread, and you can drink from that chalice. If you would prefer the other option, which is to have me intinct it for you in a separate chalice, the chalice that Colleen will hold, put two hands together, and I'll intinct it for you, and then uh, give it to you. We have gluten-free as well, and as always, all are always invited and asked to come forward. So if you are not to receive communion, Cross your arms that you might receive a blessing. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the blood of our Savior. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The blessing of Okay. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God's light shine through you into the whole world. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may God's light shine through you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, happy Easter. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, happy Blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God's light shine through you to the whole world. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may God's light shine through you into the whole world. Amen. One hand or two for you. One. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy Easter.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage of sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. You may relax for a couple announcements. Thank you so very much for joining us this Easter. Uh, I meant what I said. There is a giant cake uh, in, uh, in the parish hall, so we hope that you can join us for some festivities. Um, there's the Easter egg hunt. There's just like a lot of fun going on today, so uh, we invite you to partake in all of that. And then really just a massive thank you. Um, a lot of people went to, pulled together to, to make something like this happen, right? From, from our organist to our singing ministers to everybody here on the altar, just, and everybody behind the scenes. Um, if you have ever been part of an altar guild, you know that Easter season that week is, is the just nonstop. So really, thank you to all of those people who have been, to all of you who have made today such a special day. Our closing hymn for this morning is <coughs> stuck to this page. Our closing hymn for this morning is Hallelujah, the strife is over, the battle won.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.